Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the EICAS Engine Information and Crew Alert System on board the 777-300ER by PMDG. Now uh, one of the reasons I think this uh, deserves its own video is just to give you an idea of how incredibly sophisticated the system actually is and some of the kind of basic capabilities that it has. Now as you can see here, I'm actually nowhere near the cabin. Um, I, I'm just kind of sitting here uh, doing my like, little United thing. I'm actually looking all the way up the front. Oh man, I'm the only person on this flight and uh, for some bummer reason I got stuck all the way here in the back. But that's okay, let's see how the captain's doing up front. Hey, not bad. So we're going to be taking a very, very, very short flight today and uh, kind of showing off some of the functionality of the cast there and kind of getting an idea of sort of what it does. So first things first, uh, to get to it, um, we're just going to kind of swing over here to the middle. You can see my throttles are sort of chilling there. And all of the different settings you're going to see are going to be basically generated in this page that's located right here. Now, one of the things I want to warn everybody about is you can actually change where these pages are. That's so one of the coolest things about this particular aircraft, which I always got a kick out of. And to do that, you'll actually notice my inboard display can be shifted. I can actually come over here and flip this over to navigation view. I can flip this over to the PFD view. It is totally up to you where you want to put this particular screen, which is just kind of one of those little fun things that people always forget that there's a button for that kind of a thing. I just kind of like that one. Another thing you want to know too, which is a very, very helpful here when you come down here, is there's actually a little display view where you can kind of adjust these two screens. Again, we have the upper display and the lower display display if it's too bright or it's too dark for you you actually have access to that right there which makes your life just a tiny bit simpler depending on kind of on what it is you're trying to achieve and display on those particular pages so to access the different modes of the EICAS uh, it's uh, pretty easy uh, all you have to do is uh, move your head back just a little bit and uh, what you're going to have is you're going to have all of your different modes here now one of the things I always like to tell people is you're actually going to be mixing and matching switches here and so you got to be kind of mindful uh, the first thing you're going to see is which one of these displays you actually want to show something Thing on. Uh, this is important. Also, your cancel recall buttons right here. For example, if I press left inboard and I select elect, what it's going to do is it's going to put the electrical display over here. Now you're sitting there going, I, I, I wanted it down here. What, what the heck, man? What the heck? Remember, you can always go over here and cycle that to basically disable that functionality. You'll notice it switches back to lower center first automatically. Now, one of the reasons that that's kind of fun to play with, and it's something a lot of people miss when they're fiddling with this aircraft, is you can do really goofy things like this. And now there's nothing wrong with that in the slightest. And uh, one of the things I love about that is you can actually monitor multiple systems at a time by using those different pages there. Now, again, uh, depending on what version of this and how goofy you want to get, you can go pretty hard as far as uh, fiddling with all these different settings here. And again, a 787 and the uh, Airbus A350 are the same way as far as being able to push all sorts of crazy buttons here. But again, one of the neat things is if you ever want the navigation display, you can just set it. So if you want it to be silly, you could actually put this on nav over here. Or again, I can come over here and I can cycle that like that. Now, one of the cool things people do, too, is they'll come over here. They'll set this to EI cast real quickly here. Go to left inboard and do something silly like press the gear button. You'll notice nothing happens here. Now, the reason it's doing that is because you always have to have the engine data visible. So if I switch this back to MFD, what you'll notice is it'll pop back over to the middle screen here to basically kind of occupy the space, uh, depending on exactly what you want to do it. So that's kind of the first step as far as uh, kind of getting the hang of this. And uh, what I'm actually going to do is for the purposes of demonstration here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do one of these real quickly here. I'm going to switch that back to MFD. I'll go to the lower center. I'm going to go switch that to my checklist page just so that's ready to go. Is I'm actually going to be using this screen here for this purpose. And the reason I'm doing it that way is it just makes my life a little bit easier for these particular purposes. So I'm going to go set right unbound. Now you have a bunch of different pages. Uh, your primary kind of page page is the ENGA page, which is the engine display page. What this is going to do is it's going to be telling you what your engines are doing right now. As we can see here, we've got two engines. They're not moving at the same speed. Um, <laughs> welcome to twin engine airplanes. The two engines running in formation with each other, they're not the same engines. And it's going to give us all the critical details we need at that page. Uh, the next one a lot of people push is the STAT page. Uh, the STAT in it, it's not a bad page. It's going to tell you if your APU is running. It's going to let you know what your hydraulic levels as well as pressures are. And it's also going to tell you what the crew oxygen pressure is. So fairly useful depending on what you need to do. These are kind of the primary two that we use a lot. The next page we have is the ELEC button. 
Now, one of the cool things that they do in any of these Boeing aircraft is anything that is green is connected. Anything that is white is disconnected. Now, the reason this is important to us is if you take a look here, you can tell very, very clearly that all of these buses are being generated off of here to the left transfer. Both of our backup generators are operational, hence green, but they're not actually connected to something. If we were to have a generator failure, you could actually watch these bus ties automatically click in. So uh, just for the purposes of uh, being annoying here, let me go ahead and reach up here. Uh, 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 go ahead and pop that one off. And what you'll see is it'll actually pop off to that gray color to let us know that that's not operational. Now, if I disconnect my main generator here, you will notice that instantaneously my bus tie kicked on and linked the two sides of the airplane together. And you can see the new path that that particular one does. Go ahead and re-engage both these systems. I'm just gonna double check to make sure everything reconnected. And you can see everything reconnected instantly to show you exactly what happens with this particular aircraft here. Like I said, fantastically simple aircraft. Now, one thing I have to actually do is get ready for descent here. <laughs> here I am uh, talking my head off without realizing that oh, there is an airplane. that We do have a flight today, kind of a thing like that. Drop that down to two grand. So what I'm going to do now is head over to our hydraulic page. Now the hydraulic page follows the exact same procedure. One of the things that's really impressive about the hydraulic page is it will show you all the different pumps represented as a square, and it'll show you all of these basically users directed by these kind of like rounded rectangle kind of things. The reason this is so useful to us is we can see exactly what system is doing what at any given time. For example, I can see my right engine is going ahead and providing power into here. Uh, my system automatically pauses when it reaches top of descent. Isn't that cool? Um, so what it's done here is, is actually you can take a look very clearly that we're running off of the right engine for the system. And we can see that the demand pump is turned on. Now, the reason that's so useful to us is let's say for some reason our hydraulic pump on the right side came off. Uh, what you'll notice here is that when that's out, the demand pump automatically kicked in just like that. And we didn't even feel any interruption in the performance of the aircraft. It continued. Uh, the other thing you'll notice is all of the different systems that are actually driven by the hydraulics are all linked there. So I'm actually popped that sucker back on. And one of the things I always find interesting so we have air driven hydraulic pumps on here, which is just like, wow. But I can actually shut these elects off and it'll go ahead and trigger those different isolation valves automatically. Actually, right now they're open for this particular purpose, but we can actually shut them and have them run off directly. The next page we're going to look at is the fuel page. Now, we're not carrying a lot of fuel on board today, but one of the same exact philosophy is kept here. Anything that is providing is lit in green. Anything that is absorbing, you can see we've got these two valves coming in here. We've got one basically a cutoff valve, and of course we have the engine valves themselves. We can also see that we're not cross-feeding uh, between the two sides. So one of the things I can actually do here is, let's say, for example, I wanted to do some cross-feeding. If I open those two valves here, it will slowly engage the cross-feed valves. Now, for anybody who's ever worked on an airplane before, we'll tell you, just because you open the cross-feed does not mean that they will feed each other. Uh, that's just not how these things work. Uh, if we actually wanted to run fuel out of here into this engine, we'd have to actually shut the fuel pumps off on the side. And it would actually suck fuel through the cross feed and pressurize that particular motor. But again, that's, that's for another day. But again, you can see how that is indicated just in the same way that everything else is indicated on the screen. The air page is basically going to be telling you a couple different things. It's going to be telling you um, as far as our temperature controls, it's going to say how warm the cabin is. It's in Fahrenheit, don't panic. It's also going to let us know what our duct pressure is. So we know exactly how much pressure is being pulled out of the engine. It's also going to show us all of our different valves here. So we know exactly what it is we're trying to do. I'm actually going to cancel out that hold there. I don't need it to hold at that particular altitude. That's perfectly fine for me. Eh, not gonna work. There it goes, told you it would work. So we can see here is our pressure actually will change dynamically. Ooh, over speed, over speed. And the reason we're getting an overspeed is because of the wind change. But slam the uh, speed brakes out there. Yeah, that's all I thought I needed. Much better. So one of the things we can see here, again, is the same philosophy. And the greens show open paths. And one of the things you'll find very interesting here is we actually have an open path, but nothing happens. Now you can see our left and right isolation valves are open, but our center isolation valve is closed. And one of the cool things is if you actually lift your head up here, you can see that it is indeed like that. Now, if I were to go ahead and hit that switch and manually close it, you can see that it closes itself automatically. Now, if I were to go ahead and close this one, you'll see that this one will automatically close as well. It's actually gonna yell at me. Now, the cool thing here is all we really have done is isolated the APU from the left side of the aircraft, uh, which could be very critical in certain types of emergencies, uh, just to give you an idea of what we can't do. I uh, also notice that my APU there is opened, and now if I were to slam the APU closed, the APU is not running, you're not gonna see anything different here. You're just gonna simply get a warning over on your message page, kind of giving you a heads 
heads up saying, hey, uh, was it your intention to do this? And uh, yeah, my intention was to do that. I'm demonstrating my point. Now, one of the cool things you can see here is the way that the system works so quickly to basically tweak things if something goes wrong. Now, for example, let me shut off the right engine's bleed. I'll reach up, let's assume we're getting smoke from there or something like that. We're gonna get an angry warning, but you'll notice instantaneously all the valves open up and you can see them very clearly on this page to basically feed things into the back side of the airplane so that we're still getting plenty of good flow. It's still pretty comfortable in here. Now, if we wanted to isolate that pack, for example, let's assume maybe the pack's giving us the issue here. Let's go ahead and isolate the pack. You'll see that that pack will disengage. Oh, did I hit the right one or did I always do that? No, no, I did the right, I did the right. Um, so that pack will actually shut itself off here. So we're getting a little bit of air through here, but let's say this entire side is basically not working so well for us. So we could isolate that entire side of the aircraft by closing all the critical valves. So now that right pack is completely out of our particular component. And again, we're getting bleed loss on uh, the wing on the right. That again, would be very important if we had, um, we tried to de-ice or something. You can actually watch the pressure drop off because we're not doing anything to it right now. But we'll be nice to this airplane and go ahead and turn everything on. And of course, uh, when we re-enable it, you'll see the duct pressure comes back up as the bleed kicks back in and everybody starts uh, stop complaining because they're not getting so bo uh, boiled about that today. So the door control, pretty straightforward. It's gonna turn on different tones if we're armed versus not armed. And again, you'll see them here. Gear page, uh, the big thing you need to know about this is it tells you if the doors are closed. It's also going to give you a little heads up. I'm just, I don't know what my flight is doing. I've just been kind of rambling this whole time here. Let's do, uh, get this thing coming down pretty quick here. Now again, that sounds pretty good to me. Down, Dino, down. <laughs> so what this page is going to do is this is going to show you all the different pressures of individual tires as well as the brake temps. Um, obviously, we haven't used the brakes. If I were to squeeze the brakes right now, nothing's going to happen because the wheels are, of course, not turning. So they're not going to generate any heat. Uh, the flight control page is really fun uh, because what it will do is it'll tell you what each individual flight control is doing. Like I can see my little flapper on here in the neutral positions. My aileron there is a little dip down on my stabilator trim. Of course, you can see my rudder trim. Everything is all there visible for you. We have the in-op page, which is supposed to be the cameras. We don't get those. And then we get the fun page everybody forgets about, and that is the checklist page. Now, the cool thing with this aircraft is if you program things correctly, the checklist page will remind you if you skipped something. So again, if I went to recall, I could come up here and press recall, and you can see recall comes out node. We can check the notes, auto brake set, landing data set, all the approach briefing. Again, we can check all those options. If we needed to, we could reset it. If we wanted to go to the normal page, we can actually go up to the top and see all the different checklists. We also have a handy dandy little non-normal page here that we can come in here and actually double check to make sure we haven't made any mistakes. We can also reset all the checklists if we need to, depending kind of on what we did or did not do kind of a thing on our specific flight. Again, any little features that we have are sort of ready to go for us for that purpose. We have the nav page, actually the nav page we'll get to. We have the comm page. Um, I have nothing to show here. Um, the reason I have nothing to show here is because I haven't set up any of the different components for the cell cal. Oh, that's, wow, that is a video in and of itself. Um, so again, we can come in here and do all sorts of stuff and basically send it. We could say, I want this level here and I want to do this, step block, pop, pop, pop. And then we could send it. But again, we have nothing here that we can actually use for this because I don't have that configured with this particular aircraft. Lastly, it's our nav page. I think you know how the nav page works. Uh, the cool thing with the nav page, of course, is the nav pages are isolated. Uh, there's two separate nav pages. So if I actually sit over here and fiddle with this one, I'm gonna get a different response to the one I'm seeing over on the left. Now, there's one more quick thing that we'll take a look at here as we're taking this impossibly long left turn here, is if I switch to my engine page here and I actually disengage, click it one more time, I've clicked this button twice, you will notice that unlike other Air Boeing aircraft, we get no little data down here. Uh, it just does not work that way in this plane. It's a little bit different than you're probably used to. It also shuts that display off, so it's completely off. Lastly, of course, you're saying, well, this is actually a pretty good little demo. You can see how all the systems work so efficiently in this aircraft. I feel sorry for the testers, to be honest. They had to go through a lot. Um, one of the cool things that we have here is people say, how do you actually set your aircraft up when you're flying? And the reality is, and this is going to sound awful, is it's going to depend on what I'm doing. Um, obviously, if I'm just flying, I leave it in this mode. There's no reason not to. Always being able to glance over knowing what your engines are doing, in my opinion, as a real pilot, is very, very important. Um, obviously, navigation data is really, really critical. We could go into a whole, uh, basically, speech on this one, describing how you can use it, better ways to use it, ways not to use it, putting your terrain on and your weather radar and all that other stuff. Actually, we have some pretty strong weather today, so I would not be surprised if we actually pick up some of the green stuff today, but uh, I'm not going to worry about it too much. Cabin ready. Um, the other thing, of course, is um, you always want to use the one that makes sense. 
So if we were to have like a sudden engine out or something like that, you want to make sure that you're on the page that works best for you for whatever particular situation that you're going through at that particular moment. And again, I won't fiddle with it too much. For example, if I know I'm on the ground, I'm going to use the door display. If I know that I need to make sure that uh, my APU is running, I'm going to make sure I'm on the stat display. If I know that I'm getting an engine start, obviously having that. If I'm trying to do something with balancing out the two fuel tanks, I'm probably going to be on the fuel page. Uh, the checklist page, I almost always leave down here, uh, depending on what my particular flight is. And generally, since I don't have a co-pilot, there's really no reason not to use this for something else. So one of the things you could do, again, pop over here, pop in the engine page. This feels very awkward to me. I like rather have checklist here and engine here. It's just my personal preference. But you have to use the data that's not going to be distracting to you and, of course, the data that you actually can use. Enjoy.